Okay, so we are in the middle of the second paragraph on page Lamates. The line begins with the word Dikmoi Kain. And the Rebbe is now explaining a very important principle that we really have to kind of shed some of our a narrow a view of things uh, to, to be able to relate to it. And that is that the SS Firis Hagnuzois are SS Firis that are contained in the Oyrin Soif, despite the fact that they're truly consent and contained in the Oyrin Soif, yet they're not add ons to the Oyrin Soif. As you said, they're kolu and muuchod, and one completely united, and, and they cannot be identified independently, individually. And the same thing Yerba says. Actually, this is where after the kmoi came. The line begins with kmoi came. This is three lines from the from the end of that paragraph, the three wide lines. The Khmer came were similarly who gam bisharoshi hakeim. The similar principle applies also in when we talk about the root of kelim. Shehei khmer shehei boi rinsoi boru. The kelim as they are within their source in the oil rinsoi. Shehei nema bichinets mitzius has v'sholim. That in the Oyen Soif, they're not bivchinus materials, they're not in the realm, in the, they're not qualified as a materials, as a presence. This principle that Kalim are also rooted in the Oyen Soif, which we still need to, be, to discuss, but we have to understand a very important principle in general. And particular difficulty comes to Kalim. We have already discussed from the oil perspective that when we say a certain thought, a certain idea, a certain seichel makes sense, we already came to recognize that the fact that it makes sense is not that I don't have anything to contradict it within the realm of my experience. Make sense means that there is a truth about it, and I sense its truth. In other words, this is true, not merely on the functional level, but there is, there is a fundamental truth about it to it. Kalim, on the other hand, Kalim are the means by which we grasp this seichel. For example, we say all the time that there is a principle that a human being needs a table to sit at. And the table represents a certain royalty, um, of, of the person. As we said, that a person will sit around the table even if he doesn't have to, he doesn't put anything on the table. Just to get people together, they sit around the table. Favorite expression, around the round table. Then, there is also the keli. This is the oil element. Then there's the keli. If you need need to do something, if you need to eat, you need a table in front of you 
to be able to put the plate down. Which is a completely different aspect of what the table stands for. Now, this Kaylee element is this also a, 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 a rooted phenomenality, or is this simply the result of some kind of, a, of, of, the, of the functional level? It's just um, will be impossible, will be more difficult to, to partake in what you're doing. So therefore, we say that the, the, on that level, we say the Kali is the result of the practical experience. It's not rooted in some kind of a of a source, and kind of a higher source, a special source. And this is what we say: that this is not true. The Kali also have a, shor- a, a source. It's called Soroshe Hakeli the roots of the Kalim. And the roots of the Kalim, not only do they provide a root, a basis for the Kalim, but they are rooted in the very reality of the Eri Sof itself. In other words, the Kalim also represents an Eri an Sof element. Although it can be totally compl- contained and explained within the, the practical realm. So we discussed this some time ago, but now I'm just going to explain, trying to, to explain the, the word, the, what we are learning here. The Khmeri Kane of Shoshi Akilim, that the same is true in Shoshi Akilim, in the roots of the Kilim, Khmeri Shehei Be Oyrin Soy Boro. The Kilim as they are within the Oyrin Soy, Shehei Nam Bibhinis Mitzias Chasvashor. There's the Oyrin Soy that is the root for the Kilim, and there they are not in Bibhinis Mitzias. There is no Mitzias for them. And yet, there's a source for it. Who can know that? As is known, the ois is horishimu. That the ois is of the rishimu. What this is referring to, I'm sure we, we, all, we all remember this, said so that after the tzimtzum, there was a rishim, a reshim, a trace of the oil that was there before remaining. After the tzimtzum, all that's left of that trace of that original oil, it was called the oisios that are contained therein. These OCOs are there even before the Chimtsu. After the Chimtsu, they surface, they surface, they come forth. But for the Chimtsu, they are also there. So it's explained that the Oishis or Shimo, the Oishis or Shimo, this is the Oishis or this is the Shoyrish Hakeel. Kmoi Shehein Koidem Ha Chimtsu. In the state that they are before the tzimtzum, einom bimtzius oisius klav, they are not at all in the in, in the stand of mitzius, of of a presence of oisius. Although this is where oisius are rooted. We just talk right now about Oasis corresponds to what we said about Kalim. Mm-hmm. Oasis said, Oasis Hashimu, this is the source of the Kalim. Mm-hmm. Okay, we will pursue this 
and I'll put in certain between the lines pointers so that we will be able to can relate to what we're learning. I don't want to preempt the whole thing and that's not what we're trying to do here. Then we're going to a convoluted discussion. Oishis or Shimo, they are the source of decay. And these Oishis, as they are, call them a chimtum, they're not in, in a state of Mitzvah's Oishis. They cannot be described as a Mitzvah's, as a presence of Oishis. If you do as is known, the Maimer Golib Glifu. The Maimer Golib Glifu. In that expression in the Zoya, which is Golib Glifu. Golib Glifu means he, he created, he made a scratch. That is, in, in, in a Zoya, that, that in, in, in the onset of the, of the will of the king to create, the first thing he did is Golib Glifu, he created a scratch in the oil and surf. This Okay, this is what he explained. We're not, I'm not going to go further in this. That's the, that's the, the Oasis before the Simpson? Right, Scar- this is the Scar- source of the Oasis before the Simpson. The call to King Besharoi Shehoi is and surely in the roots of the Oiris, Shehein Bebchines Blima, that the Oiris are Bebchines Blima, as we already discussed, they do not have their own identity. They are part and parcel of the Oiris. Okay, I want to stop here for a second and give us a little bit of perspective what we, what we are we're pursuing over here. We want to identify Oiris, Koikeidim, and identify Oiris, and the first, and we identify, we identify them not as they are within our own realm, our own experience, but as they are in their source. Who says there's a source for it? He says, no, there's a source. In order to, uh, to relate to the source, to a source element, we have to understand things a little bit within our, within our purview within our conceptualization. So classically we say a a cane is like a table, a chair. And we pointed out many times. A table in its proper place, in the dining room, is absorbed by the by the oil in, within which it is contained and what it brings out like I said many times a dining room table does not speak about itself it speaks about the overall phenomenon of a dining room this is where the table belongs and that then it is completely camouflaged so to speak and it is contained and represents it is bottled to the to the to the environment. Now we know that we can go in in Macy's and buy a table. When we go to Macy's buy a table, we do not we're not taking the table out of their dining room and bring it to our to our home. We're taking it from a showroom. What is the concept that created this table and put in the in the showroom? And he, you could say it's 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 there like projecting a, a dining room. But my question is, is, is a little more, more significant. In the dining room, 
we understand what is doing there. And it, it kind of it claims its right to be there. In the showroom, it also stands on its own. It stands on its own four legs. Standing on its own means that that it kind of has a claim for the right to stand it, for, for being. What is it? You would not bring in, in, into a showroom um, um, a, 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 a board for which the, the, the dining room is, the table is made from. You would not bring in raw materials and show it, you see, I have potential for a table. There's something real about this table, even when it said when it stands in the in the showroom. And this reality is not by projecting what it what it's gonna look like when it's in the dining room. But it actually presents itself. In other words, there is a reality in the Kali, all on its own. There's a reality in the Kali, all on its own. Let me take this one step further. As of now, it is not in a dining room. In order for it to be a dining room, there has to be a human being who owns a home. And he builds, builds a dining room table, a dining room area. And then you will say, okay, now we have a place for the, for the, for the table. Right now it's standing, it's standing in, in the show, there's no human being even looking at it. The dining room table will not be brought into into the showroom when a person says, "Oh, let me let me see a table." It has a certain reality of its own, and it's brought in there, and it's and it's set up. It sounds a little bit difficult even to project the question I'm asking. But the question is valid. What gives it a presence before it becomes a functional presence? And I'll explain this from, from Halacha. In the showroom, you said. In the showroom. Allah says that a person has to be clad, covered, to a great degree. All the places, on his body places that, that are normally covered in public have to be covered even in the private chambers. What, what, is, that, what is that talking about? Why? What's the inspiration for covering it in your private in, in, in your private um, uh, room. What's the significance of it? Is it projecting that what if people would come in? No, people are not going to come in. The door is locked. Nobody is going to come. It's for oneself. For oneself. What does it mean for oneself? For his own uh, uh, dignity. Where is that dignity rooted?
his own dignity is within his own mind, his own, his own heart, his own nefesh. To cover his body is not something that's rooted within himself. The body is an external thing. So let me give a, a little bit of a broader perspective on this. We all understand, and this is on the simplest level, a human being in the world is not an add-on to the world. He truly belongs in the world. As I've said many times, the world without the human being would not even be rise when they call the world. So it's like a, a chicken without a head. I don't want to say a human being without a head. It would be the, a world without, without anything, any significance. What is the significance that the human being brings to the world? Not going into this and a full force, but we all, because we all sense it with many, many, many times. There's a certain reality that a human being brings to the world. Right in the onset, when the Rebbe created the human being, he said, You make a man in our form in, in, in my likeness. Which means the human being will bring to the world a sense of the fact that there is a creator to the world. The world didn't just come out by evolutionary process, but it was created intentionally. There's an intent with it. And then, practically speaking, what would be the position of the human being? It's not just going to be a symbol of, of the Creator. The position of the human being will be, the year the Bigas Ayam, that he will rule the whole world. He will actually rule all the creatures in the world. And this rulership, as we know, the rulership that a human being has over the other, other creatures is not merely that he is more capable of, um, of, of force, forcing them to, to do what he wants, but that the creatures actually shy in front of the human being. He stands as a pillar of reality in the world. This spirit that was imbued in the world, as a, by by and in, that was brought to the world, not in, brought to the world by revealing by the, by the creation of the human being. The creation of the human being was only the the culmination of the creation of the world that brought us out in the open. But in, but in essence, the world had a creator before the human being was put into it. The human being was the combination of the, and, and bringing it, so to speak, to, to, to actuality. This was not an afterthought. This is the, the initial intent was to have a real world. And and he gave the world a chance to orient yourself and say, yes, absolutely, it has to be a human being. Otherwise, I'm a nothing. How do I know I'm a nothing? Because I have a spirit, I sense what I'm supposed to be.
Yes, sir. So we had the, the whole uh, exposition of the table in the showroom. This is I'm not. This is now being. No, no, I'm not finished. Okay, uh, so I went back into the oral, in, in the, into the exposing, in, uh, from the, uh, speaking about the human being. The human being is not that the human being, he created the spirit of, of there being a human being. The human being revealed the overall spirit of the world itself. The godly spirit, yeah, spirit that's within him. The, uh, the other spirit that's within him, this is what revealed it. Come on. I stopped you. Okay. He only revealed it. In other words, it was there all the time. At the point, he's not con he's not constructing it himself. It was given, it's given it was, to it was, him. Uh, the, the world was created initially with a spirit. That spirit contained within all the all the on him that 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 populated the world, including the human being. Except the, the, these things came to be revealed in the world piecemeal, so to speak. So say the so that the world will know what what has been what has been brought into it. Will be oriented and say, "Oh, yeah, this is a human being. This is an animal." And I know that there is an, that there could be a world without the human being, and then it would not be a, a world. That, that that's our sen this is the main point that it's brought in in stages so that it's not overwhelmed. And that's not the point of my discussion here. My discussion here that we should understand that. All the things that populate the world are initially contained within the concept of world. This is what is what world is. World is not an evolutionary process. World is a created entity. As a created entity has everything that go into it, in, 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 in the evolutionary element and the creator. If there is no representation of the creator, then it's not a world. This in element that there is also the element of the creator in the world. This states, by the notion initially, that the world stands for, for, a, for, a, for, a, for the dignity of the creator. Has an inherent element of dignity. Because it is a created entity by a creator. This is where Caleb comes from. There's a reality inherent in the world. This is what I'm saying. Come back to the table. I just want to make the sense we have to stop. What is this? What is the so to speak, the, the perplexing Indian, the phenomenal Indian in, in the spiritual furniture. And the spiritual furniture is totally useless on its own. And yet, say, oh, there's a real thing here. Where do we get the sense there's a real thing here? This Indian, that a real thing, is, is so profound that when we see a piece of furniture that's broken, ah, what a pity. It's broken, it's useless. It's back to its, from, uh, to its piece of wood. So, uh, it, it's a disgrace. 
because really it represents a certain spirit, a certain greatness. What is this greatness? It's inherent in the, in the world. This is the Kali element as it's contained within within the, the reality and, and the creation itself. There is no Kalim at all there. There's nothing present. But there's a certain reality that everything that there, there is an inherent in reality in it. Okay, now we have to stop, I'm sorry. Okay, this is it for this morning. We will resume this tomorrow in session. Okay. Yeah.